it is good also. Even if you fail and you went astray, mm. it's good to try and develop that level of trust. It's, 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 it's always good in that marriage. Because if it is not there, some layer allegations will bring a lot of commotion in the same marriage and uh, there shall be a lot of shaking mm. when it comes to the relationship because out of small allegations, they will tear you apart. Yeah. Small information that is not right will tear you apart. Mm. So there is a level of trust a couple must establish. Amen. So it's a duty for every married couple you to try to, to establish a certain level mm -hmm. of trust. Mm -hmm. That you can be trusted by your spouse. She knows your weakness. Yes, you are not perfect. Mm -hmm. But she knows what you are able to do. Mm -hmm. For example, even if you have slept with that woman mm -hmm. before you got married and you have never lied before to her mm -hmm. and you have maintained that Mm -hmm. You never lie and she has never seen you lie. Mm -hmm. And she knows you fear God. You are a little person you repented. I want to tell you for sure, this, this woman will trust you. Amen. And some trust will come to, yeah. that, to that kind of a marriage mm -hmm. that you are going to experience. Yeah. Now, I want also to say this, a mature man, because we are building on this so that you can get that understanding. A mature man when you grow up, mm -hmm. you are able to make right choices. So it begins even before marriage. You are able to make a, a right choice. You don't fall for a mistress. Mm -hmm. You are able to look for a good quality in a wife and make a right choice. Mm -hmm. That's a person who is responsible. You, are, you make choices. Mm -hmm. And you are able to look at things and you make uh, choices. In other ones, you also make choice even over ones and even actions to take. You can be offended, but before you conclude it, you jump into conclusion, you think about it. Mm -hmm. You think about it. Before you conclude that your woman or your wife cheated, you think about it. Even you can give it time to see. You decide to, to weigh this matter and give it a thought. First. Now, I want you to help somebody mm. because there are some men, they are born again, but they, are, they, they have never been delivered from anger. Before they think That's about immaturity. it, before they think about it, they are some flat. anger came because of lack of patience. Mm -hmm. You are not able to tolerate some things. Mm -hmm. So you become so angry. You are not able to be, it is maturity to control yourself. You can control yourself and watch things. And pray for that spirit. Even if you feel like you want to act, you have ability to control your emotion. That is maturity. Ability to control your emotion, not emotions controlling you. So when you allow your emotions to control you, you lose control of your own life. So this thinking, mm -hmm. you think what the outcome of something before even you do it. Yeah. The outcome, what will be the results? You think about it. When you think about it, you'll be careful. There are some things, when you give it a second thought, you will not do it. When you think again, you go through it, you evaluate everything, you don't do it. So give yourself that ability. That is, that is to be responsible. You think about something before you do it. You think about your words. You think about your actions. You think about something before you act. When you act that, you are showing maturity. Now, uh, this is something very sensitive, my mm, dear. Mm. Something that you are talking, something that you are impressing. Mm. Because... Uh, Volume. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> because there are some men, and of course even some women, but let me, let me take it uh, on the side of men. Mm -hmm. When they are angered, just something little. How, how, how will this process of maturity, because here yeah, it, it means God is needed, especially to people when they are when they get mad, they can do anything, they can talk anything, they can even pack and go for one week. They are not telling this woman where they are. They can put off their phone and when they come still, they are carrying the same thing. And they, they even say, my, when my tempers are, are, are stand up, I... I, I that, that man needs deliverance. You need yeah, to be delivered. No, it, that is why we are saying about responsible person. We are saying about actions. We are talking about character. 
You are supposed to be humiliated, uh, humiliated by others. They are supposed to follow your example. You may not be real. You may not be authentic, but uh, you may not be perfect, but you are authentic. You are real. So that is accepting that I am a person. Therefore, I can make error. I may be able to make mistakes. So I must think carefully before I act. And that is the wisdom of life. You have to think carefully before you, you act. And then you also need to know that your life where you are is the total sum of all the decisions that you have made. So all the decisions that you have been making is what has made you to be where you are. So if you make a wrong decision, you'll be in the wrong direction. If you make the right direction, decision, you're in the right di di direction. Now, let me say this. The distinction or what distinguishes us men from animals is our ability to say no to ourselves. It is our ability to say no to ourselves. There are things you feel you want to do yourself, but you deny yourself from doing it. Mm -hmm. Yourself. That is what we call self-control. That's the difference between us and animals. Ability to deny ourselves what we want. That is why you can discipline yourself. You can fast. You can deny yourself food and say, I will not take the food. You deny. That's self-discipline. The self-discipline is what makes a person to be different from an animal. So if you are not able to deny yourself what you want, mm -hmm. you say no to yourself, then you are not different from an animal. An animal will never fast. As long as it sees the food there, it will eat. It will never say no to itself. Mm -hmm. So we as human beings... We are able to say no to ourselves. That's what makes us different from animals. So men, you cannot believe, behave like animals. You cannot do something and say you are tempted. You cannot sleep with a woman and say, I met her naked. You cannot steal money and say, I met the money on the table. You can say no to that. You can refuse and say, I will not take it. And you, you say no, even if there is a need in you, you want it, and, but you deny yourself that need. That makes you a man. That, makes the, that, that is what is causing now the difference. You are able to say no to some things. And now, when we come to that now, men have a weakness. That's why we say you must be responsible enough to understand that you have to say no to yourself. And when it comes to that, women have more control than men. And I, I believe men stayed close to animals and they were more degraded than women. Uh, because now that makes us closer to, we, to, 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 to men. That is why you can hear even uh, some women say uh, men are animals. Because we stayed with animals more. So we are closer to animals. Even our look is closer to the animal than the look of the woman. Because we stayed with animals from the beginning. But we have to, to distinguish and say that we were not Created and don't be like animals. Mm -hmm. We are not. You say we're not a, a human being is not an animal. Mm -hmm. what, we may be classified scientifically in the class of animals uh, or a mammal class. We are not. We're not mammals. We are not in the class of animals. We are human beings. We were not created the way animals were created. Different. We have the soul of God. We carry the spirit of God in us. We have intellect. We can do things. And design things. But what makes you exit that class and prove that you are not an animal is the ability to say no to yourself. Please know that. That, what, that will take you very far in life. Ability to say no to yourself. There are things you feel you need, but you say no to yourself. Another thing that will make you more move. It's your ability to make decisions that will change your environment. Ability to make decisions that are able to change your environment. Men were not created to camouflage with the environment. They are created to change that environment. Man, natural man, a created man of God, naturally, is a person who was 
They are created to transform things, to change them. To change them. That is why we cook food. We don't just eat raw food. We cook. We build houses. We build roads. We do all these things, the, the level of subduing and replenishing the earth. That's what we are given. Animals don't cook. You do not hear animals saying, this grass, we have eaten it for a long time. And when it is raw green like this, we need to boil it today or fry it and see how it is. It will eat it green like that. All the days of its life, cows never boil grass to eat. They just eat it raw like that. The cow wouldn't look like the environment where it sleeps. You look at zebras, you look at every animal. It, it is able to camouflage with the environment. But man does not camouflage, camouflage with the environment. Even if they try to wear a uniform that looks like bush, those who are wound, uh, wood ridges, uh, KWS men, you see them, they will try, but you still, when you see them, you see, you know that is a man yeah. from even afar. Mm -hmm. Man is stand tall. And what makes us the difference is to make decisions Amen. that can change your environment. So you are a man who is carrying that responsibility to make a decision that will change that marriage. To make a decision that will change your life. To make a decision that will bring improvement to what you are going through in a marriage relationship. And that is what makes you a man and you are able to make decisions that are able to change environments. So if you are a man who cannot make any decision to change anything, you are a man who just follows the wave when it comes like that. You are a man who can never say no to himself. Then you are not mature. There are so many things that are left desired in your life. There are so many things that are left which are wrong. Mm. And therefore it will not be very possible or it will be something very difficult for you to enjoy a good relationship mm. in marriage. Mm. So you need to be that man who is able to to make decisions and to think before you make decisions. You choose friends. You choose ones. You choose actions. You choose fellowship. You choose a lot of things. You have to sit down and choose. And these choices are supposed to be done in wisdom and they will take you to where you are supposed to be. And I believe you are hearing me as a man. You must be think, using your mind to think so that you make a decision. That's why God gave us that ability, that gift of thinking, so that we can have see things. That is why we are not carried out easily by environment and make choices. That's why you cannot buy anything that you meet on the street. Women may have that weakness. When they see something good, they want to buy it. As long as they have ability, they can carry everything along with themselves because they see it good. But man, you have to think this something is going for 10,000. If I buy it, what will happen? You think. You think about what is needed, what is valuable at that time, which is a priority at that time. And you think it. And then you do it. So when you meet yourself, you are not able to make choices. You got money, but you are not able to arrive with money at home. You used everything. You squandered everything. That means you are not mature. You are not able to make a decision that will help you or profit you at tomorrow. You get the money. You have received the bonus. Then they don't see you for one month. Then you come with your bonus. When you come, the man will say, I cannot sleep in the same house with money. That's a cursed man. I cannot sleep this house and money sleeps. One of us must be out. Whether me or money. This is a man who is cast. And there are men who are like that. Not unless you are helped. You cannot make a good choice. I came from a family. My father is a good father. He's a good man. Did everything to bring us up. But he had a weakness. A big one. My mother, if could not arrive 
a place where he was working. She was timing from 24th, 25th, 26th. That week, mm -hmm. she should be there when the salaries are given. When she arrives there, when the salary comes, he, he, leaves, he leaves her in the house, goes and pick the salary from the office. Listen to me. He will give her everything she needs. And tomorrow, she plans the journey to go back home with the money so that he can, she can pay school fees. She can do a lot of things. When my father, my mother is late for two days or one day and salary I received, <laughs> money for that month, we will not see it. So it's good. Mm. But it was managed by the wife. Not many our wives who can manage them like that. My grandfather, my grandfather, and the same weakness of money. There was a weakness in him. And I want you to understand this. His wife, my grandmother, was not a good manager. She was going, received the money. She could come and drink the money with her lovers when the husband is busy working for a mzungu somewhere. And none of our children went to school, including my father. They were bright, but they did not go through school. The man is there working, but the wife was not able <laughs> to manage because the man was a poor manager. So a poor manager having a poor helper, it is a disaster. Mm. So some men, you may have that kind of a weakness. But you need to have a woman who has strength in doing that. Because there are some women who have strength in doing that decision. They don't just buy for the sake of buy. They don't have that aspect of a woman. Because they are grown hand. There are some things that have hardened them. So if you lack such a person around you, at the end of it all, you shall be, <laughs> not, you shall be unfulfilled. You not have accomplished what you wanted in life. And that is why you need to, to, to think. Sometimes men, we are gotten by time without us thinking. Please listen to me. Anytime I talk to men, I have a concern. We are gotten by time before we, we, we know it. The time has gotten us. Because somehow we may not be careful now we, think, we do things because we don't look at our time. That's why David, as a worshiper, every time he will tell God, tell me the number of my days. So that he can program himself. So you need to be a person who is able to program yourself and look at what is going to happen. The old age, whether you like it or not, will come. And I always say, children will always lean to the side of the mother. It doesn't matter how good father you are. They shall lean because at that age, all responsibility rests with the mother. She is the one cooking. She is the one looking for food. You are not cooking. You are not looking for food. There is no any other assignment that you are left with in that house. It is to eat and to dress. So they will buy you clothes. They will bring you uh, all those things. But they will not give you money. The way they will give the mother. Because they say, dad will eat from, from mom. So I want to tell you, if you have nothing... They will leave you early. But if you are something, they will stay close to you. They will even feed you more. Because they know you are something that you are protecting. They will come to you even if you are not able to see them. Like Isaac. He's not able to see Jacob and Isaac, but they are still coming. Because the father has something. So don't render yourself useless. Think about your thoughts. Think about your actions. There's some actions you do and you define yourself. Right now, because you have strength, you run to several homes. You have a home in east, you have the home in west, north and south. You are hiding. They will tear you apart. They will destroy you and you will not be able to enjoy the, the life that you want. Establish yourself in a home. Think about your action. When you humiliate your wife, Women don't forget, they are not like us. 
There are some who are visited by devil at their own age and they decide to revenge what you are doing when they were young. Please don't treat them well so that even if they look for mistake, they will not see it. And even when you go to heaven and there is a change of law that there is marriage, they will still choose you. Because you treated them very well as a man. Please let us be people who are doing that. Think of uh, how you act. Think about your actions. What is the outcome of your actions? David did not think the outcome of his action when he slept with uh, Uriah's wife. And look at what happened to David. Look at what happened to his life. Because he never thought the action. Hmm. Abraham did not think the action of sleeping with the maid. Though it was a conviction from Sarah. He did not think about that. Look at what happened now after Ismail has come. The life of Abraham and the children did not remain the same again. Even now. Think about your action as a man. A man is a thinker. And he is supposed to think. You use your end to think and reason and make decisions. And you think the right things. You think are, the are, right things are that make decisions. Yeah, some of them they are, they are thinking but they are not thinking right. So they should think about right things. Think about right things. And something else, the, the one says, a righteous man will leave inheritance to his children's children. Amen. So you should always be on your knees and seeking God to give you divine ideas. Divine ideas that will direct you to divine project, and this project will be multiplied and they will be fruitful, as so that the day you will be exiting, even before you exit, already your grandchildren know that our grandpa uh, he has something for us, and that is a blessed man. And each one of us, we should desire that, uh, we should seek God for that. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, uh, I want us also to know this. I, I, I finish this point so that they follow one another so that you will not be confused as you follow me. Uh, this man who is responsible also. Remember I said this man who is responsible must have a clear conviction. Number two must make the right choices. And number three now, this man who we as is responsible, he must be a man who confesses. You must be a man who confesses. Confession is that ability to agree when you are wrong. You agree when you are wrong. You seek for forgiveness and make it right. And this is escaping many men. It's a character that is Moving away from many men, and this is a sign of immaturity. It's a sign of immaturity. When you cannot accept or agree you are wrong, there are men who think they are right all times. That is a wrong perception or a wrong attitude of life. To think that you are right, whatever you say, you are right. Even Abraham and that mentality. Sometimes he was. Uh, insisting on staying for his mind. And God had to intervene and told him, Sarah is right. And Abraham had to hear that uh, Sarah is right and follow what Sarah wanted at that time. Now, men, I want you to understand, you can get it wrong sometime. You can get it wrong sometime. But that ability to admit that I have gotten it right is maturity. I have gotten it wrong is maturity. That I am wrong. How wrong was I? That's maturity. That I can make a wrong decision at this time. I can do something wrong and say I am sorry even to your children. I am sorry, even to your, to your wife. Something things that is demeaning your, yourself. It's like a man of authority, a man with a head, does not say, I am sorry, which is very wrong. So you must be admitting that you are wrong. You cannot be right at all times. 
and admit you are wrong and ask for forgiveness. That is confession. I am wrong and ask for forgiveness. Then be courageous to take responsibility for your mistakes. Be courageous to take responsibility. That is maturity. I did a mistake and I'm ready to take. I am liable for what I did. I am responsible for this. I'm very responsible. And take responsibility for your mistake. Now, when you look at Adam, our father, the first man to be created, in Genesis that, uh, uh, 3, that verse 12, when God came and spoke to Ab Adam, and when Adam was asked about the fruit, if he ate the fruit, what did he say? He said, it is the woman who you brought to me, who gave it to me and I ate. That was immature and demonstration that he was not wise. He lost all the wisdom. Remember, he's the man who was naming everything the way God would name. But that time, he demonstrated immaturity. Mm -hmm. When you cannot confess and admit you are wrong, you don't confess. You don't take the blame. You keep on passing the blame. And you can't accept responsibility. You keep on passing the blame. And that is what Adam did. If Adam took the blame at that time, I say, I am wrong. We took this and took the responsibility. I want to tell you, maybe we could be speaking another story in the world. But this man did not take responsibility. He simply passed it to the woman. And what about the woman? She could not take responsibility too. She passed it to the snake. Because the pace was set. Because the man is the end. Yeah. And he started everything. Mm. So the snake was not taught not to eat. So it was not the business of the snake. And what happened? Cars entered the world. Because the man was the one asked. I want you to understand as a man. You are responsible for everything that happens with your own. Before I'm going to ask your wife a question, he will ask you first. Before God blames the wife or ask the wife what really went wrong, he will ask you first. Before your wife starts before God, you have to represent her first. And then she will come on her time and then she face judgment. But you have to represent her. And the Bible says you should give her to God as blameless. Blameless woman. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be a man who takes responsibility. You take the blame. Accept that you have done wrong. Confess and make it right. A real and mature man do not pass blame. You don't keep on blaming. I blame you. You keep on blaming. What you know you could have controlled. You take charge. And this shows that you are, you are mature. Most of the marriages are in problem because of blames. Blame game. Blame. Everybody is blaming. This blaming the other. Blaming the other. Blaming the other. Blaming the other. Blame game is the order in that marriage. Because you have not taken responsibility. You have to take responsibility and confess and say, I am sorry. Very few men apologize to their wives. Very few. You want the woman when she has done wrong to confess she is wrong and apologize to you. But you don't confess your own wrongs. You don't apologize your own mistakes as a man. This is the time we set that pace. When you have done wrong as a man, tell your woman, tell your wife, I am sorry darling. When you fail the children, tell the children, I am sorry, and I am going to make it right. That is man who is moving by conviction. There's a man who is, who is there as a responsible father. You are able to take the blame. You are able to take that mistake. You are able to admit that 
I am not always right. They may call you Mr. Right, but you are not always right. You can make a mistake, you can get it wrong. And mate, sometimes we get wrong and we get wounded. And we would even others. We would others because we did not admit that we got it wrong at this time. We got it wrong. We just soldier on and make sure I cannot make a mistake. If I tell them it's a mistake, they will not trust me anymore. They will not see my authority. The authority is not seen because you cannot admit and confess. The authority is seen if you are able to admit your mistake. Look at David and Saul as I finish on that issue. Who did the bigger mistake than the other? Saul did lesser than David. David killed Uriah, you know that, to cover up his adultery with the wife. He committed adultery and killed the man. What about King Saul? King Saul, <laughs> he went on a mission. And when he went on a mission, King Saul did not do everything that he was told. He chose to to, 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 to spare and save King Agag together with the, some fat animals in the name of sacrifice. Then he elevated himself. He went and set a monument for himself. The monument is supposed to set, be set in the, by the prophet. He took it himself and went to, to do it. He became great before his eyes. He was elevated by pride. And what happened? When God pronounced a punishment for both of them, or an intention to punish them, <laughs> King Saul told Samuel, mm. I know I've sinned, but let us, let us go. Honor me before elders. What was he looking for? Honor. Why are some men not confused, confessing when they are wrong? It's because you are looking for fake honor. That's not real honor. It's fake honor. So honor me before elders. Honor go before me. With me. Go. And then Samuel did not. He could not. He told him God has rejected you. The way he has told me. He was able even to touch the garment of his father. Which is very wrong. Touching the garment of your father. In a contest. The garment was torn. And then prophecy came immediately. The way this is done, that's how the kingdom is be told. And that was exactly what happened. Everything he took was taken. But what a David. In Psalm 51, we see him. He goes before God and Christ. I say it is before you I have sinned.